So we're gonna have a little fun today. I ordered this kit a while back on eBay. It's just, I think, if this is the one I remember, it's just like a little oscillator tone generator kind of thing. So I figured practice some soldering skills and we'll assemble this. Who knows if it actually works? Let's see, what do we got? We got a little board labeled, very easy to follow printed circuit board. That's pretty cool. So we got a speaker, everything stuck to it on the magnet. Little tiny uh, eight ohm speaker. And that's gonna connect down here. So we got a lead for that. Oh, capacitor's getting away. We've got a uh, just a simple AA battery holder. Very simple. That's gonna go up here. A couple of capacitors. Those are gonna go there and there. So it looks like we got those. Any 555P chip there that's good uh, another little ceramic capacitor there we have uh, a little trim pot and a couple of resistors and these blue resistors and they're tough to see the color especially uh, in the studio lights so I'll measure those real quick to make sure we get those in the right spot but other than that should be pretty easy assuming it actually works in the first place. So let's get started. I'm gonna try to show everything here, but I am not an expert in electronics. That's why I practice these things to keep my skills and knowledge improving. I hope this video might inspire you to get back into soldering if you've been away from it for a while or to try it for the first time if you haven't before. It's a great skill and a really fun hobby. Now you can see my first step was to carefully bend the pins on the 555 to fit into its position on the board, noting where the notch is on the chip to orient it correctly. I then add a bit too much flux before I solder each pin into place. A good method is to do opposing corner pins first to help hold the chip in place while you finish the other pins. Everything's looking good there, so let's mop up some of that extra flux. If you haven't used it before, flux just helps the solder to melt more effectively. I highly recommend it. You saw me measure the two resistors with my meter to find the 5K and 2K values, bending the leads again to fit them into their positions with the legs just spread wide enough to hold them in place, uh, and these can go in in either direction. We crop those legs a bit shorter, then solder them in, Next up is the little ceramic capacitor. Again, this guy is not polarized, so you can just stick him in, crop the legs, and solder. Next up are our electrolytic capacitors, and these are polarized, so we need to look for the shorter leg, which indicates the negative. And that's also marked with a band or a stripe on the component if the legs have already been cut short. Pay attention putting these in, as with this example, they are next to each other on the board, but physically opposite of how they're oriented. Stick them in, clip them, and solder them. You can see while I'm doing this, I got a bit sloppy and bridged two legs together with a solder blob. Not to worry, just carefully reheat that, suck out the extra, and carry on. With those out of the way, we move on to the potentiometer, which has three big legs to solder. Take your time and these should be easy. We can clean up the clipped legs so they don't get stuck to the speaker here as we try to work with it. And then we solder the leads to the speaker and we are all done. So let's see what happens. Not really sure if this is gonna work. Again, could be bad components, could be bad soldering, could be dead batteries, honestly. Haven't tried these batteries in a while, so got plenty more on hand though, if that is an issue. This may just come to life. It 
It's like a clicker. Hold on. Let me find some better batteries. We got some better rechargeables and then a whole rack of uh, gig batteries there. Let's try this guy. Hey, it works. It's very quiet. That's got to be the most underwhelming thing. I think I've ever made. <laughs> uh, let's see if a set of uh, energizers does anything. A little better. And that is it for this kit and this video. Just a quick bit of fun here in an otherwise slam-packed week of gigs. I know this isn't live sound specific, but so much of what we do crosses over into other areas of study, and I hope you'll stick around for some of these other types of videos. Head over to the website at dcsoundop.com for more info and resources to help you learn more about electronics and soldering, and that's all in the DIY and electronics section you'll find in the tab at the top. If you liked this one, let me know by hitting the like button below, leave a comment, it really does help help. Get subscribed if you aren't already, and I hope everyone will take a second to check the notification bell. Thanks again for your help, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.